Hello there, my name is Sebastian Straub. I'm a system engineer here at N2W, and I'll be taking you through installation of Cloud Protection Manager. As you can see, I already shared my screen, and we're currently at my EC2 console. The very first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a policy and a role that we're going to be using with Cloud Protection Manager. So we're gonna visit IAM, and I'm going to create a policy. Create policy. And then we're going to switch to JSON and we'll get rid of what's currently in there. Now the JSON file with the permissions that we're going to be needing, we're going to get them from our knowledge base article. It says one right here. What are the required minimal AWS permissions roles for CPM operations? If you scroll all the way to the bottom of this page, you're going to find a zip file that you can unzip and it's going to contain a JSON file with all of the permissions that are necessary for Cloud Protection Manager to fulfill all of its duties. So let's switch back to my IAM console. I already went ahead and downloaded the file, and this is the content. As you can see, we also have different sections for all of the different permissions for recovery, redshift, RDS recovery, and so on. The file that I'm looking for is the 2.3 permissions all. It's this one at the top. I also have my notepad open, and I'm going to copy this into my notepad and then I'm going to hit control all control copy and I can then simply copy all of these permissions into my JSON editor right here within AWS I'm going to review the policy but I'm going to give it a descriptive name so it's easy for me to find I'm going to choose n2ws cpm and then I'm going to create this policy now we have that policy created. Now we're gonna to switch to roles because we also need to create a role which will use that policy. So I'm gonna go in to click create policy and I'm gonna choose EC2. And the one that we want is EC2 allows EC2 instances to call AWS services on your behalf. Next, I'm gonna click permissions. And what we're going to do is we'll just look for the policy that we just created. So N2W, there it is, just simply tick box that. And click next and review again i'm going to give this a descriptive title and to ws cpm and i'm going to create this role great now we are halfway there the next part is we're going to switch to our ec2 console i'm going to click on running instances so i can actually see the instances that i already have in my aws account i have a web server here and i want to use cloud protection manager to protect that web server so what i'm going to do is i'll click launch instance then i'm going to switch to aws marketplace right here on the left side of the screen in the search bar i'm only going to look for n2ws that's going to show us all of the different versions and editions of Cloud Protection Manager. And the one that we're looking for is the free trial, the bring your own license edition. I'm going to select that edition. It's going to give us a little bit more information about that version. I'm going to click continue. And then we have some more choices. So I'm going to choose T2 small. That's perfectly fine for our purposes here. I'm going to click configure instant details. And then I get to choose which VPC I want to use. In my case, I only have the default VPC. If you have other VPCs, just make sure that that VPC has the ability to go out to the internet and also contact all of the AWS endpoints as well. Now, over here under IAM role, we already created a role, so we're just going to accept that role that we just created. It's going to make things a lot easier later on when we do the configuration. Also, enable termination protection. It's probably wise to turn this on so that we're not going to accidentally delete Cloud Protection Manager once it is installed. Then click Add Storage. Now, that's the default storage. Uh, it's 8 gigabytes, which is perfectly fine for our purposes. Click Add Tags. Now, I'm going to make this easy on myself, so that's why I'm going to add a tag. And the key that I'm going to choose is Name. And then I'm going to give this a value but it's going to be easy to find for me. So N2WS CPM. So that means that the instance is going to start with this name already pre-assigned. Configure security group. I'm going to let Cloud Protection Manager create a security group for me. And this is going to open up port 443. All of the communication with Cloud Protection Manager is going to go through that port. And I will also open up uh, port 22, just in case I do want to SSH into the server. Then I'm going to click on Review and Launch. 
I'm going to take a quick look at everything that I've chosen. I'm going to click Launch. And it's going to ask me to create either a new key pair or choose an existing one. In our case, I'm going to create a new key pair. I'm going to call this one once again, N2WS CPM. I'm going to download that key pair just in case for later on. And then I'm going to launch that instance. And this is only going to take a couple minutes or so. There we go. All right, your instances are now launching again. I'll make it easy on myself, so I'm going to choose that instance ID right here on the page. And that's going to take me straight to the instance that we just launched. There we go. Now my Cloud Protection Manager is already up and running. As I said, it doesn't take a long time. Now, the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to start communicating with Cloud Protection Manager. So this is the IP address down here that I'm going to need. As you can see, if you click into this window, it's also going to show a little copy to clipboard. I'm going to make use of that. So I'm going to click on that. Just going to copy the IP address into my clipboard. I'm going to open up a new browser and we're going to hit this with HTTPS. Hit enter. All right, so the next section we're going to get, we need to create an exception for our web page because what we use during the installation is a self-signed certificate. So that's the first option that we're going to get because we need to prove that this is our instance. So the way we're going to prove this is we're going to switch back to our EC2 instance and we're going to grab this instance ID. Same thing applies, we're just going to click on the copy to clipboard button go back to my Cloud Protection Manager configuration, and then I'm going to paste this information in here. Click the Next button. I'm going to accept the license terms and agreements. Click Next. Now, what you want to do is you want to start a free trial. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to create a username, and this is going to be my root admin user that we're going to be using for Cloud Protection Manager. In my case, I'm going to name this admin. You can also leave an email address here. And of course, you also need a password as well. There we go. And I'm going to click Next. So the next step that we're going to have is where we have to choose our time zone. This is important because all of the schedules that we're going to create are going to be created in that time zone. In my case, I'm going to use EST. We're going to create a new data volume because there is no information that we want to import from a previous version. I also have the option to use a web proxy as well, which I'm not using in my case. I'm going to click Next. Now, a couple more things that we can configure here. So if I want to use an SSL server certificate, I can, and this is where I would choose this. Also, allow anonymous usage reports. That's completely up to you. If you leave it turned on, then Cloud Protection Manager is going to send some anonymous usage reports. It's really just letting us know that you're using the system. I'm going to click Next. And here I can now also register this account. And that's what I'm going to do right now. Then click on Configure System. Well, that's going to take a moment while Cloud Protection Manager is going to be configured. Great, that didn't take a long time at all. Now, Cloud Protection Manager was configured successfully, and here's our button that we have to click. So I'm gonna click, click here to start using Cloud Protection Manager. Now, this is going to take me for the first time to the sign-in page for Cloud Protection Manager. Now, in my case, I'm going to use the information that I just typed in during the configuration. I'm gonna click the sign-in button. Now, this is probably what you're going to see at the first time when you start up Cloud Protection Manager. Then I'd be actually greeted with an error message which says no backup will be performed. But that's really nothing to worry about because that just means that Cloud Protection Manager hasn't had time yet to contact our licensing server. Really, all we have to do is just simply wait one or two minutes and then hit the refresh button on our browser and then Cloud Protection Manager will be fully functional and unlocked. Well, great. That didn't take a long time at all. So once I refresh the screen, I now have my free trial completely unlocked. Now, this is the part where I can now start backing up the infrastructure that I actually want to back up. So what I like to do is first off, create a policy and a schedule to protect the Cloud Protection Manager itself. So the first thing that we'll need then is we need to configure an account. Now we're going to click on Add New Account. 
and we can name this anything that we want. This is going to be our friendly name for our AWS account that we want to back up. Account type, we're going to choose backup. And as the authentication, we're going to use CPM instance IAM role. As you probably remember from our installation video, we created a policy and a role to backup Cloud Protection Manager and also any workloads in our AWS account. And that's what we created that Cloud Protection Manager role for. So that's what we're going to rely on here. Now I'm going to click on add. So that created the account that Cloud Protection Manager can use now to back up your workloads in your AWS account. Well, I'm going to click on Home, then followed by Schedules. So the first thing that we want to do is we want to create a schedule. I'm going to call this Daily. And I want this to kick in every day at midnight. Of course, I can make changes to that here as well, and also how often I want to take this backup. I'm going to click on Apply. That created the schedule for me. The next thing, we will choose a policy. Now this one is going to be a special policy because this one is just to back up Cloud Protection Manager. So that's why we're going to choose CPM data, all lowercase one word. That's a hard coded policy that's already in the product. Generations to save, that's our retention period. I really can't conceive of a situation where somebody would want to back up more than three or four daily backups off the backup solution itself. So you can safely lower that number. I usually choose three or four. Now we're also gonna associate that with the schedule that we just created and hit apply. That's really all there is to it. From that point on, Cloud Protection Manager will protect itself. It's going to create operational backups of itself in the same region where Cloud Protection Manager is currently located. Now, this is pretty good, but we also have the option to configure disaster recovery for Cloud Protection Manager itself. And that's what we're going to do next. So right here, that's my DR button. I'm going to click on this. And I have to turn on disaster recovery. So I'm going to switch that to enabled. And now I can choose any region within my AWS account to create a disaster recovery backup off Cloud Protection Manager. I even have the option to create a cross-account disaster recovery. Now, for the purposes of this video, we're only going to choose a disaster recovery region. Now, in my case, we're going to choose Ohio. So this will trigger Cloud Protection Manager to create a disaster recovery backup off itself in the region of Ohio. I'm going to click on Apply. And again, that's really all there is to it. From now on, my entire configuration is going to get saved also additionally as a disaster recovery backup in Ohio. If you want to try this out and see if everything is working fine, then over here you have another button, Run ASAP, if you click on that. We're going to say OK. And now this backup is now running. We switch back to a backup monitor, refresh this real quick. We're going to see that now the backup is running. And in a moment, we're going to be completely protected. Now, the next step is going to be to actually create a policy and probably also another schedule for workloads that we want to save. So join me again in the next configuration video and we'll show you how to now back up the workloads in Cloud Protection Manager. Thank you, and I'll see you soon.